I haven't had too many opportunities to see them in person, but most of us have watched a magician at a show or maybe on TV. Even magicians themselves will own up to the fact that a lot of their performance is based in making the audience think that they're seeing things differently than they really are. It's called illusion. I don't think I've given away any trade secrets here, so hopefully I'm not in trouble with any magicians. In graphic design, we often employ a similar concept. Is that really a single piece of art, or is it a variety of shapes stacked or grouped or merged to look like one? These are the types of illusions that we create all the time in PowerPoint. We often use tables to control how information lays out on a slide. Formatting tables by using things like font colors and fill colors, for example, to help us identify what the header row is as different from our information, are certainly things that we can use that are pretty obvious. But we can also get a little more of the illusion. For example, if we want to make it look like we just laid things out on the slide, but we use the table to do so. These are not quite as obvious. Whether creating a traditional data table or attempting a more creative illusion, the tools are the same, and they're easily available from the aptly named Design tab. The first step to get to these contextual tabs is always to make sure that we select the table first, then we can find them on the upper right side of the ribbon. My recommendation is, unless we have one very specific thing we know we want to do to format a table, we should start with one of the predefined table styles. As a matter of fact, when we insert the table, you probably notice that it already had some formatting in place. So there is a default style built into our template. But we can display the styles gallery and see if there's something more creative that we want to do, including a variety of darker and lighter styles with header rows, alternating rows, alternating columns, and more. Click the one that we want. And that change will automatically be applied, including things like borders, fills, headers, first columns, last columns, and more. Using these styles, which work along with our theme to select colors, is fast and easy and it's one click. If for some reason we don't like everything about the table styles, then we can move to the left-hand side of the ribbon and kind of tweak it or modify it just a little bit. The very first group on the Design tab is called Table Style Options. And here, with simple check marks, we can turn on or off certain features of the styles. For example, if we don't like the header row being different, we can turn it off. We can work with a total row, especially for working with any numeric data. We can create banded rows, banded columns, different first column formatting, and different last column formatting. Obviously, for different types of data, some of these things would be appropriate. For example, if all of our account numbers were in the first column, then we'd probably want to check that box. Or if we were working with financial or money figures, then we might say that all of our totals are at the end and we might want to emphasize the last column. Not all the layouts use all of these different features, but if they do, we can simply enable or disable them by clicking on a checkbox instead of going in and manually formatting each of these features individually. Doing it that way would require that we work with each individual component as well as the font, the borders, and the fill. But that is the long, hard way. Instead, we're going to use the table styles and then the options, which I think will do just about everything we need. I can almost guarantee it at least 90, 95% of the time. I did want to show one more little trick though. If what we really want to do is to accomplish that illusion that our content is not in a table, it's just laid out nicely, we need to know how to accomplish that the fast and easy way. Unlike a good magician, I am going to reveal the secret. This illusion is accomplished by turning off grid lines. We can do this a couple of different ways, but the easiest, fastest way is to go back to our table styles. If we click on the dropdown and display the gallery, we'll notice that the very first option is always no style and no grid. That means it's not only going to turn off all of the shading, but also all of the grid lines. If we click or tap to select this option and then click off of the table, we can see the data looks nicely laid out, but there is no evidence that it was done with a table. All of the formatting doesn't have to be removed. We don't actually have to get this dramatic though. Let's click back on our table and let's go ahead and select one of our styles. If we want to leave things like the colors and the fill, we can do that by simply taking away the borders themselves, but leave everything else in place. To do this, we need to make sure that we have the table selected. Then we're going to use the layout tab. We'll move all the way to the left side of the ribbon And from the select option, which is the very first option that we have, we're going to make sure that we select the entire table. 
Now we simply need to get rid of those grid lines. All of that design stuff is, you guessed it, back on the Design tab. And from here, we can use the Borders command, which is found under the Table Styles. We're just not going to use the Gallery. We're going to work with Borders by themselves. By choosing the No Border option, then moving back to our slide and deselecting the table, we can see that even though we still have the fill color and the header row formatted differently by removing the grid lines and making it look just a little bit cleaner on our slide, which is the effect that we were really looking for. Some might say really good PowerPoint presenters are like magicians, taking their audience through a series of images and experiences comprised of a lot of normal, everyday things, but with just a few things that engage them and leave them wondering, at least a little bit, how they were done. They're just impressed with the results. Even if it's subtle, formatting tables so our audience focuses on the information and the message and not how it was done is one of the most basic keys to effective PowerPoint and slide design.